are the woman and her offspring. Soon after Adam and Eve sinned, Jehovah gave hope to their descendants by means of a remarkable prophecy. What he said is recorded at Genesis 3.15, which reads, And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He will crush your head, and you will strike him in the heel. Next, let us identify the woman. She could not have been Eve. Why not? Consider just one reason. The prophecy states that the offspring of the woman would crush the serpent's head. As we just discussed, the serpent is the spirit creature Satan, and no imperfect human offspring of Eve's would have the ability to crush him. Something more was needed. The identity of the woman mentioned at Genesis 3.15 is revealed in the last book of the Bible. This is no ordinary woman. She has the moon at her feet and a crown of twelve stars on her head. She gives birth to a most unusual child, the kingdom of God. The kingdom is heavenly, so the woman must also be heavenly. She represents the heavenly part of Jehovah's organization made up of his faithful spirit creatures. God's Word also helps us to identify the primary offspring of the woman. This offspring was to be a natural descendant of Abraham. Can you explain the prophecy at Genesis 3.15? As we have seen, Genesis 3.15 is now undergoing fulfillment. Jesus, the primary part of the offspring of the woman, recovered from his heel wound and is now a glorious, immortal king. Because the first part of the prophecy has been fulfilled, we have every reason to be confident that the final part, the crushing of the serpent's head, will also come true. 